I'm fucking tired. I want to go home. You're not going home. You know why? Because I have some questions for you. Is this a fucking question and answer? No, it's not. <laughs> but um, but if I did have to ask a question, I would ask you, what makes you think you're going to like do good at your next show? What makes me think that? Yeah, like why would you have the audacity to think that? I would say that the audacity... You just lowered your voice, just to make this all epic. The audacity of the reason why I think that. No, I don't know. I mean, I think that I got a, uh, I got the whole package. I got the confidence. I got the um, structure. Put the work in. You know. So, your first show. Well, like, how do you answer such a generic thing? You know, like when you well, t- like to just talk about anything in bodybuilding. It's like <laughs> it's just well, very. You know, I just kind of you know I feel like good about myself. Like, I bring a really solid. It's like, package yeah, like I got here, some like, big wide shoulders and a big old barrel chest. Like I don't know. No, but so you did your first show. That mm-hmm. was a local show, right? It was a. Lo- so it was a. Re- so it's a regional, yeah. So explain, like, because you explained it to me before, but it's still kind of muddy in my brain. So how does it work from just being an average Muggle pedestrian to Muggle, like fucking like Harry Potter, you can't do magic, okay. it's low resolution, like to a fucking wizard, to, to a wizard essentially, an IFBB pro, yeah. uh, Phil Heath crown wizards. How do you go from just not competing in any way, shape, or form? So then going like to the Olympia, like what does like the process look <laughs> well, like? Well, well, first of all, you obviously, so the first thing like in the NPC, you have to, there's regional shows, there's national shows, and then there's pro shows that you have to do well in to qualify for the Olympia. But basically, so at a regional show, you have to place top two in your class. Um, and when you place top two in your class, then at that point you go to the nationals. When you go to nationals um, at most of the national shows, you have to place um, you know, they only give a pro card to the number one in the class, sometimes top two in the class. And then, um, yeah. And then once you do go pro, you get your IFBB pro card. Now you're a fucking, but you got to pay for the card. professional. Yeah. Now you pay for your pro card, you're a pro. So then at that point you have to win a tier one show or you have to like, you know, there's different tiers. There's like tier one, two and three. You have to qualify with points. But to get into any of that, you first have to do a local show, right? You have to do a regional show. That's what I said. You have to do a regional, regional means like local, That's- regional, then national. Yeah. So okay, so regional, regional local, local, same thing. Mm-hmm. So, what made you even want to do a show in the first place? Well, I wanted to do a show in the first, like, what made me really, well, first of all, I, I think a big uh, factor in it was just like the fact that we're such good friends with Steve. It just watching his journey and everything like that. The, so, I mean, I, I really enjoyed watching that happen. And, you were like, well, back in the day, like, yeah. we were like in high school. Well, Steve I mean, like, it was just well, watching Steve kind of like, in a sense, just bubble out. Yeah, just will like basically bring like these world class looks. Like I when I saw Steve in the gym the first time, like when he was like, you know, a week out from a show, I had never seen anybody that looked like that. Mm-hmm. Like nobody was ever that conditioned and looked and like when you're that conditioned and you have really good shape, you look world class. Like you have a world class look. But it's interesting because I know yeah. what you mean because I would always see, you know, Growing up, like watching like Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler's, and stuff mm-hmm. on YouTube, it's one thing to see that, like on YouTube or on video and pictures, versus it's, seeing it in real life. When you see it in real life, it changes you permanently. It just simply, does. I mean, well, like, so I see Steve, and I'm like, hold this fucking like, <laughs> like, I mean, I couldn't really compute Dude, like really like what was this, going on. Like, so I'm like, okay, like that's badass, like that's really dope. And obviously for me, like I fell in love with like changing my body and you know getting stronger and just seeing those changes you know like how fucking amazing that feels when you mm-hmm. are in the gym and you know you feel good you're making changes and you're getting stronger whatever it might be so i'm like damn okay that's pretty much the pinnacle of that right like mm-hmm. he looked amazing so that motivated me in that way but i didn't even want to compete back then but then watching wait, so wait, but, but i remember recall at one point for like a few years you had like a strong mindset of like I will be the biggest, fattest, baldest couple of earrings tattoo, <laughs> strongest power lifter in the entire like stratosphere. Yeah. How did that transform? Well, I just I would say like I don't know, I, I feel like when I was in that mode, it was just an ego. Like in high school, like I just wanted to be, you know, the biggest individual that I could possibly be strictly due to like ego. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't even really like what I wanted necessarily, but it was just like what my, the dark side (laughs) of my ego wanted just like, okay, be the biggest guy you can be in your t-shirt and your sweatshirt. And so like, I think that at that time, that's why I, you know, wanted to do that. 
But in reality, what I fell in love with was bodybuilding initially. I initially fell in love. Like when I got into the gym, I was skinny. I had abs already. So just changing my body in more of an um, aesthetic way was what motivated me more than anything in the beginning. And then it shifted because I was, I was, I had a, um, I was very insecure because I started out very skinny. So I just wanted to always be bigger, be a bigger guy, bigger guy. I want to be a bigger guy, like all that. Like fucking bigger, bigger, bigger now, now. So I wanted to be bigger. And um, that's where that stemmed from. And then it switched back to my true, authentic, <laughs> vulnerable self. And when I did that, I realized, wow, I want to fucking go to the Mr. Olympia. Hmm. And then I did a show. I fucking won the overall. Yeah. How did that, wait, how did, I'm a wizard. You're, you're still like year three Hogwarts. Like if you yeah. win this next show, then you Ooh. can get like your nice fancy wand. Like you're good to go. Yeah, I don't stuff. even have a wand yet, honestly. Yeah. You're, really, you know, you're just no. kind of practicing the flicks and like the Wingardium. Yeah, it's true. And shit. But wait, so you like, you can like on your first show, yeah. you literally like transform. Like you yeah. like a month before starting your prep versus like in like the heat of the prep. Mm -hmm. Like you were just like, how would you describe how you look before your prep? Like, well, I would say to be honest, like, so like before I started my prep, I definitely like I let myself get super sloppy like fat kind of in a sense last year I mean like when I bulked I was just eating everything in sight trying to you know get really big and strong and gain as much muscle as possible kind of like high school mindset kind of high school sure. mindset but I thought oh the, you know this is the best thing to do you know to put on the most amount of muscle for my show but in reality you know it's not the best thing because then you know you're you have to cut more aggressively for longer it, it, it's not as good of, a, of an option to heavy bulk like that but that's what I did so before the show, I mean, I did have a lot of muscle and it was underneath a lot of fat. But the thing is, like when you have a lot of body fat and you're flat, like you look really <laughs> shitty. <laughs> so that's so I mean, if I was flat, you know, like there's certain pictures of me, right? Where like I'm just super flat, like maybe I lost like five pounds of glycogen. Like on a cruise, I'm on a cruise. Like <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just so there's certain pictures, right? And it's like. I just you're like, holy, like, how's Ooh, that? Yeah. How did that person? We'll put a picture like on the screen person? right now. Yeah. Yeah. Like how did that person but, transform but also like another thing is into the person I was, like we yeah. like we talked about before when you're kind of doing that essentially kind of trying to get as big as strong as possible and oftentimes that entails just eating just garbage food because you're in well the it's only really the strong to, part because to get as big as possible you don't need to do yeah that. But, but what I'm getting at is like you, you were basically dirty bulking you were just eating obviously yeah. not like as horribly as you possibly could like if a clean meal presented itself to you you wouldn't wipe it away you would eat well, it but yeah you probably would wipe it away a little bit but you were just eating garbage and i feel like once you hit a certain threshold of a certain body composition like being a certain level of body fat you don't like your nutrient partitioning isn't nearly as optimal well you're as not as be. insulin sensitive either so you don't yeah. utilize carbohydrates as well like when you're that like when your body i got honestly i'm not even gonna pretend to like try to explain exactly why but you're definitely not as insulin sensitive so mm -hmm. essentially you're not you like the carbs that you intake aren't utilized as well mm -hmm. so that's that's definitely what happens and it just gets to a point where now you're you're actually you get so much body fat that you're not building muscle as yeah. optimally you can build muscle better at a lower body fat not eight percent but you know what i'm saying i i, I experienced that to a very small degree mm -hmm. when we did our fast the one that you granola barred and didn't finish right but because i you know probably I'm never gonna through. fucking live that down you know that right you know we're making t-shirts right we're gonna <laughs> but no once i hit well I, literally when i like before i started that fast i was kind of like you know a little like skinny fat like not as like like lean as i oh, like possibly could be and just my physique just wasn't quite there in a certain type of way and then after i did that fast i noticed afterward like my nutrient partitioning was so much better i literally felt the utilizations of all the nutrients that i was eating and just my body composition everything mm. was so much better because remember you and you were describing like towards the end of the show when you're just so depleted you could actually feel the nuanced differences and how different foods make you feel and how they fill you up yeah. and the energy and all that. Well, I, yeah, I feel like when I was, when I, when I got to the point where I was super, super lean, like I was like, you know, single digit body fat, like whatever, whatever that percent was. But when I was very lean, single digits, like you notice, cause when your body has like, let's just say a healthy amount of fat on it or a normal amount of fat, right? Like when you don't eat food for even a day or whatever, you, you might get hungry, but you, at the same time, you still can, you know, go, you still can have energy and function at a normal rate in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, and that's because your body uses fat that you already have stored and uses that for energy. But when you, ba but when your body pretty much has like no fucking fat on it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you said, I just feel like, yeah, when your body has like no fat, then when you eat a meal, 
you, you get energy from it. You get like a boost. And then when that meal starts to cycle and like kind of, yeah, out of your body in a sense, Mm -hmm. you feel that the nutrients leaving Mm -hmm. and you're no longer, you have no energy. So it's like when I was on prep, if I didn't eat, you know, every few hours, even, even though it was just a little bit of food, I would just completely be like dead, like almost go hyperglycemic. Like I would, there was one time where I actually, I actually like almost fainted and Cornelius had to drive, drive us home. And then I had to like, literally like, I had to literally fucking text Steve. Is it okay? Can I have a, like a, a Gatorade? And I got like a Gatorade because it was to the point where like, I think, yeah, I went hyperglycemic and, you um, the Gatorade, they should light you up. Or you yeah. I, like I literally, and then, and then just from having some carbs, it literally completely revitalized me like immediately. So going back to the show. So this first and only prep up to this point that you've done, right? If zero is literally no effort at all and 10 is literally just giving it absolutely every ounce of everything you had, where would you put your <laughs> RPE in this prep? I would say probably like an eight realistically. An eight? Yeah. I would say an eight. Yeah. Cause I mean, and the thing is for me is like, I knew, and like, this is a bad, this is kind of a bad mindset, like going in, going into it, honestly. But I, saw what like regional shows you know like what type of competition would like are at these types of shows and things of that nature so i mean me me saying an eight is probably like what a lot of people would would be a ten and a half out of ten but like the thing is i mean there were certain so for example like i ended up cheating on the diet twice um only twice though twice yeah i cheated on the diet twice which I mean, you know what I mean? That's not going to be a 10 That's right there. two points deduction from a 10. No, but, eight. and then on top of that, I mean, like I would say there was maybe, you know, literally out of like the 14 weeks. So like over a hundred days, maybe three times, like two or three times where with cardio, I would, instead of doing it all at one time, I would, you know, I would go do some of it. What was that? How it was prescribed? To well, this like is what I would do. Back. So, for example, this, this is what I would do. Like, I, like, if I had an hour of cardio, I would only do forty-five minutes, and then the next day do an hour and twenty, which <laughs> is not. And that <laughs> happened like literally two or three times. <laughs> but at least, I mean, at least you made up for it, though. I mean, I did make up for it, but I'm saying, and like again, it's not like this was a frequent, but there were little, little minute things that I, yeah, exactly. And the other thing, the other thing I want to say too, the last thing that I didn't do perfectly was when it came to like meal timing, I could have been a lot better with that as well. Mm-hmm. Which makes a difference, yeah. But but like you were saying that I mean, and I hundred percent agree. Just like me observing mm-hmm. you throughout the prep and stuff, like that would be most people's like nine or tens. But mm-hmm. for you, you knew it was an eight. But at the same time, you almost did it in a wise type of way because you knew you had the wiggle room. Because like you said, going into this regional show, you had a rough estimation in your mind of what the competition was going to be like, and you knew your genetics, you knew yeah. your current level of development. So you just kind of knew that 100%. I'm just going to walk in and I'm just going to take the trophy. Yeah, I, I I knew that. I felt that in my heart. And honestly, like when I do the next show, like it's going to be a hundred percent, ten out of ten, literally one hundred percent pedal to the metal, like. I'm gonna leave it all, all there. I'll is leave your, it all. Wait, so like, is the is them like the however long your prep was for the first? Yeah. It's gonna be the same length for the second one. No, it's gonna be 18 weeks. So is that how much was the first one? The first one was 12 weeks. Well, it was like four. It was technically 14, 14 weeks. This one's gonna be 18 weeks. Are you, are you excited to start? Or do you feel like right now you're just in purgatory, just kind of? No, like, I mean I love what I'm doing now. Like I, I mean, but I am excited. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, I do enjoy the bulking in like a lot of ways, and like just being able to enjoy life, honestly. Because when you're on prep, the fact that you, you, I can't go out and drink with friends. I mean, which I don't do frequently, but you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like if we're. If it's, lifestyle is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you can't when you're going out to eat, right? Like you, lit- I literally have to bring a Tupperware. So I mean, that pretty much cancels out me going. You know what I mean? Going to enjoy food with friends because at that point it's kind of like I'm just bringing a Tupperware. Like you know what I mean? So if it's a situation where I have to go out, right? Like mm-hmm. if it's like we're at a Gym Shark event, I have to bring a Tupperware. And if it's like just a normal friend, you know, get together, I just won't go because. I on I just can't eat food. I can't really do much. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I enjoy that aspect, but I am really fucking excited just because when I was on prep, I feel like I had such a good schedule and like it gives you so much motivation when you're on prep because you know, you have that like the discipline is there day in and day out. Mm-hmm. If you just stay disciplined, then like a lot of the days you're also going to be really motivated too because you're you know when you're disciplined and like everything is like on a tee like that oh, i think yeah. it just it's a better recipe for motivation too because you're waking up like you're eating your meals you're doing your cardio like you're out and active all day no like yeah. like i i've like 
I've thought about that too. Like having a concrete set goal in the future where every second moment, minute leading up to that, like has value and meaning and you could do it optimally or inoptimally. Mm -hmm. That just, that just gives your day so much motivation. Like if you don't have like something absolutely concrete, it's way easier to justify or rationalize, maybe skipping, you know, your meal or your workout or like finishing it short, this, it's that. Like when you have like a day that you need to look a certain way, that's definitely extremely fulfilling going at that. No, it really is, honestly. And like, that's what I'm, I'm looking forward to most. And honestly, I, what I love most about competing too is just, and I was telling James this the other day, like is just transforming it, like seeing my body transform and transcend like into like an extremely next level, something I've never seen before. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when I do a prep, every time I do a prep, my goal is to create a package that is, that I've never seen before on my body. It's never been seen before. Mm -hmm. So like, you know what I mean? That in itself is just so motivating, you know, like, because it's what, like I said, kind of earlier, I love fucking seeing I, changes. And so you see those changes on a crazy next how level. How did it feel on show day though? I don't even know. I mean, it was weird. Like on, sh like, didn't you have that issue with like one of the foods was not working? Your oh body yeah. Well, something? basically what happened was, so the day before the show, right? I go to get my tanning done and Steve Cow, which is my coach, Mr. Bubbles, he texts me. He's like, yo, like, you know, like sometimes the tanning shit can take super long. Like bring a meal, like bring your next meal with you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, no, like Steve, fuck you, dude. Like you're fucking small. I don't, I'm doing what I want to do. So I show up to the tanning thing. It takes literally two hours longer than it's supposed to. So it gets to the point where my phone died also. My phone died, so I couldn't text Steve, like, yo, like, should I just go get a meal? So what I did was I went to like, I forgot, I think it was like Outback. And I got just a plain baked potato, no salt, no butter, no anything, mm. and just plain chicken breast. I said, don't cook it in oil, no salt, no nothing. So I get, I get that. And like for some reason, I don't know what it was. I, the potato, maybe, I don't know. I, the potato <laughs> literally ruined my physique. Like I looked like <laughs> fucking, I looked nine weeks out again. Like my body was just whacked the fuck out. I don't know what it was. And then, um, Wait, this was before the, this first was show literally, day? this was the night before this is 11 o'clock the night, the night before. Did you take like an exact, dude, it was so bad. So like literally out, like, like everyone that was there with me at the show was like, like they kind of start like kind of yeah. creeping back to their hotel rooms. Mom's like, it's not my son. Corn kind of, my mom wasn't there, but like corn starts like kind of like talking himself in the bed. <laughs> like I'm like freaking out, texting Steve, Steve's like, dude, I think you're fine, man. You're just bugging out. <laughs> and I'm like, whatever. So I like, okay, I eat my last meal. I go to bed. And then when I wake up in the morning, I look fucking, I look, I look good again. I look completely fine. And I was super relieved. Cause I mean, no, I like, like my, I was so watery. I think the tan made me look shitty too. Oh, yeah, Everything like came together. I wake up on show day and I'm feeling good, dude. I didn't even, I slept for an hour that night. Really? I literally was laying in the bed and I'm just like, worrying. not even worrying. It was not worry at all. It was, it was zero worry. It was like excitement and like anticipation anticipation i guess you could say some worryish because it's more like you know well, i mean worried about the bloating and shit because you have well no, no not even that yet. because no i started noticing my body like by like yeah it was fixing itself. yeah it was fixing Man itself day. but i don't know like i just i was up all night thinking like i was just so excited and like ready to like go on like step on stage and just do it you know what i mean like i was mm -hmm. i just wanted to go do it i was like i need to fucking do this like i want to get this shit over with i want to do it and like so I slept for basically an hour and, uh, I mean, yeah, then literally the next day I had a shit ton of energy. I was like ready to go. But the thing is after my, uh, after the morning show, so there's pre judging and then there's finals after pre judging, like I started getting a little tired, but like just the adrenaline and like how, like much I you wanted fart. to win, how much I wanted to win the finals kept me still like, you know, mm -hmm. in this so state of like. So flow what, state. What would you say the peak, the peak, just thrill and rush was? Was it like right before they announced like who the winner is? Is that gambling just that? Yeah, just like, oh, I was man, literally man, like, man. holy, like I don't even know. Yeah, I, mean, I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, like I documented this prep, like I was getting literally a million views a month on my YouTube. So it's like, you know what I mean? Like literally a shitload of people were watching videos every single time I uploaded them. And like following this journey with me, you know what I mean? So I have mm -hmm. basically tens of thousands of people on my Instagram and YouTube that are like, that are watching. So it's almost like, it's not just that crowd that's there and I can kind of not post my results and <laughs> kind of, you know, fuck, you know, I didn't do good at this show, you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like the, I, you know, I fully put the pressure on myself. 
Mm. And so like, it wasn't like I knew if I didn't win, I, I know people would still be supportive, but it's just like, I wanted to fucking win. Cause like, you know what I mean? Like I mm. had all those eyes on me. I'm like, no, I want to fucking win. So that moment where it's like, okay, I, I knew I won my class after prejudging, but then like they, they, they sit us there for finals and they call like third place to, and I'm like, all right, fucking good. We're out of the clear. At least we're top two in the show, in the whole show. And then they call second. And I'm like, oh, and it was just like, it was such a weight lifted off my shoulders. Like, Damn. it really felt, it, well, I, cause I put a shit ton of pressure on myself because I was like, I fucking need to win this. I really need to win this shit. And, um, especially cause I felt like, okay, it's a regional show. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I want to, I want to like good first impression, you know, I want a good first impression. Like I want to prove the potential to myself that I can like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you know, you can't do any better than winning the overall. So, I mean, I was like, yeah, I don't know. It was, it was fucking wild. And as soon as I won, I was like immediately just thinking about like, okay, now I want food. Cause all day I wasn't even worried about food. Like every day on prep, I'm fucking food, 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 food. Mm-hmm. And then right after, and then, you know, the day of the show, I didn't give a fuck about food cause I just wanted to win and I wanted to like get it done. You know what I mean? And then right after the show, right after like everything happened, it was just so euphoric. Cause like I got to just go backstage, fucking eat all this food. And then I left on a vacation like that night. So it was just, yeah, it was fucking awesome. So did you reverse diet like a responsible young man? No, I how would you how would you rate your post contest post contest nutritional one to ten? Well, my post contest nutrition was a fucking zero. A zero. I basically so but like, did you but did you plan on reverse dieting though? Was that no, the idea? No, no, I didn't. I didn't plan on it because okay. I didn't like nobody understands how serious it is like a rebound because when your body is so deprived for so long. And it's not used to getting, um, it's used to, cause even if you're salting your meals every day, six meals a day, that's nothing like, you know, if you're eating normal American food, you know, like that is massive amounts of salt. You know what I mean? Way more salt. So my body was not used to a lot of food, was not used to salt. And when that happens and you eat a shit ton of food, a shit ton of carbs and salt, your body, and it's pretty obvious, is just going to want to hold on to it, obviously. So, I mean, I was eating like seven, 8,000 calories every, for like, because me and my ex-girlfriend, obviously, you know, well, you know, this is like, mm-hmm. yeah, we were um, literally, yeah, we went to, we went to Jamaica and like all the Caribbean food, which you don't even, I didn't even tell you this, has literally eight times more salt. Really? Literally, like it's known. Like people are known to like fucking have edema in their legs, like just from eating the food there for a week. Like it's that salty. Like they salt the living shit out of the food. So like I just straight up got, yeah, I mean like I it blew the fuck up like a balloon, gained 30 pounds, and it just got to the point where the one that I'm sitting there, me and my girlfriend, my (laughs) ex-girlfriend, we're literally sitting there and like, we're hanging out with a few other couples and like, we're just drinking, hanging out, having a good time. And like, I realize I'm wearing some fucking (laughs) dress pants and I'm like, like the, 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 uh, the calf of my dress pants was completely suctioned (laughs) like a fucking vac seal. It was vac sealed. And like when I put them on, right, in in the beginning of the night, five hours prior, they were loose. They they wouldn't touch on the calves. So I'm like, oh, that's kind of really weird. I'm like, fuck, maybe I'm like really full right now. I'm like, yeah, like I'm full. So then I kind of go to the bathroom. I like pull my fucking pant leg up and my leg was like literally so bloated. My my, My lower calf was so bloated. It just looked like a sphere. And when, and when <laughs> I pressed whole, in, your whole, yes, it was a cylinder. It was like. just a cylinder. And when I pressed <laughs> in on the, um, on the bone, so I, what I had was it's called, um, pitting edema. So when you press down, right there, it literally leaves a hole that, that <laughs> stays there for 20 seconds. Like imagine you press down the and there's a crater. Canyon. There's literally a crater in my leg. So I fucking lose it. And I'm like, this is horrible. I'm dying right now. I didn't know what was going on. And so we go back to the hotel room. I literally just kind of like calm myself down. And then the next morning I go into the, uh, like the nurse and they're like, okay, well basically they told me like they checked like a few things out. They said, you're fine. You basically just, cause I told them I had done the show and I ate all this food and all this, all this alcohol and stuff. And they're like, yeah, what happened is your body's holding on to mm-hmm. all this salt. Like your body releases a, uh, some sort of like a substance or hormone, something when you, 
deprive it of too much sodium for too long and then you eat a shit ton of it it ho- and like it, yeah, so it, hormone, it, whatever, that's it holds on like, to more sodium than like you like i've your been bo- conditioned over the past few yeah. months that this shit is scarce if yeah. i can get any of it i'm gonna hold the fuck so, on so it literally like releases shit that makes you hold on to it more than ever and mm-hmm. you have too much of it in your body circulating mm-hmm. so it just was a horrible recipe and i felt like it was fucking terrible what do you think your blood pressure was I got it taken when I was there. My blood pressure was like 150 over 110, which for me is extremely high. Like it's even right now while I'm bulking, my blood pressure is probably, it's usually like, it's like 130 over maybe like 80 to 90, mm-hmm. like maximum. I mean like 125 probably over like 80 is more so what it is. And um, yeah, it, it was so it was fucking horrible. And on prep, my blood pressure was 117 over 70. So I, that was the, the last reading I got. And then I go in and I get this 150 over 110. And that freaked me out too. And I was like, I need to lose this fucking water. So this next show, you think you got the proper discipline to reverse? No, 100%. Properly. I'm going to reverse how, diet. Because you probably know better than me. Like how common to my extremely limited Everybody, their first show. Like not, not even just first show, but most people that they, they know that, okay, reverse dieting is the better thing to do. And they tell themselves, I'm going to be the person who reverse diets like after, mm-hmm. you know, X show or whatever. And then I feel like there's a very low percentage success rate with that. It's definitely very difficult because like you have to think like you're like when you're on prep, you're not allowed to eat anything off. Like you're on a specific diet, like your coach is giving you and it's all so similar. The foods are the same. That's how it is. Super, super quick. How would you describe the difference in the hunger from being on prep versus like 20, 30 hours in a fast? It's just 10 times worse. Worse is prolonged stretch. Well, it's months. It's months. It's literally two months. You might be for eight weeks, literally straight. You might be hungry. You're pretty much, you could always eat a fuckload of food because you never, when you eat, you're never fully satiating that Mm -hmm. yourself. You know what I mean? Like you're eating just enough so that your body can perform and that's it. You're not eating yeah. enough to satiate your belly, your body, like, you know what I mean? So you're trying to strip all, it's obvious, you know what I mean? You're trying to strip off all yeah. the fat. So it's fucked up, dude. It's fucking, it's cruel. It's literally cruel and unusual punishment. But the thing is, it's beautiful too because at the same time, it literally weans out the fucking, pe- like the people who can't do that. Like, you know, when you're doing that, you're like, you know, 99% of people in the world have, no, 99.9% have never done push this themselves in any capacity in any medium. have never pushed themselves but this is one of the hardest ways to push yourself depriving mm-hmm. like food sex and like what like you know what i mean like these those are probably the two biggest pleasures that people indulge in and they're like you know what i'm saying like compared mm-hmm. maybe other than drugs but like it essentially is like you feel like a crack fiend like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like but honestly, it's pr- like, yeah, it's horrible. Cause it's just like, you want the food more than like literally anything. Like I would mm-hmm. be, and everyone, and I talked to so many competitors and they said this, like when I'm fucking on prep, I'm on the Stairmaster for an hour watching like food videos, like <laughs> food trucks, like, f- like people so co- cooking. Like it literally is. It's literally like, and everyone backstage is like, Oh, you do that too. Like shit. <laughs> and I was like, fuck. And like, like everybody does it. I've, I've heard a few people say this yeah. and initially I thought it was like a joke at first, maybe, you know, a funny thing to say or whatever. But then the last two people I heard say it, like, it sounded like it was a very serious thing. Like they say that like while they're on their prep, they take their friend out and get like their most favorite meal possible and they tell them to eat it and they sit there and they just watch them eat it. It's like some, wait, you're some saying weird sadistic. Oh, like, that. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, even like it gets to the point where even what, like just having that good food around you or smelling it and watching other people eat it is a certain pleasure in itself. But like, isn't it like, can it be worse? Cause it's, a I mean, not really like you just want it to be around it. Like, I don't know. It's that bad. Like you just want to smell it, be around it, watch someone eat it. And it's just, it's fucking terrible. It really is. But the thing is like, I complained like last prep about my hunger. I'm, oh, I'm hungry. But in reality, it's like at the end of the day, you know, I signed up for it. Like you're, you're signing up to do it. And if you want to get into elite condition, then shut the fuck up and do it. And it's just like, so for my next prep, like I'm not even going to, let myself mentally like complain in my head or out loud about like I'm hungry like in this because it's just like that's just like after your first prep because you don't understand how serious it is right and then now okay I understand this is just what it takes now I know what it takes and now that I know what it takes it's like I'm not going to complain about it I'm just going to fucking you know what I mean? you just got to if you're going to continue to do it then just do it and I saw actually Brian Ainsley talking on his YouTube like he was like, yo, like guy, like, and he was like a few weeks out from the Olympics. He's like, guys, like we're fucking eating six meals a day. Like you're not starving. 
You know what I mean? Like you're you're fucking okay. You know what I mean? Like yes, you're mm-hmm. hungry. Like oh my god, I'm hungry. But like it's not starving to the point where you're actually like getting gonna get In sick and die. Being, yeah. Exactly. So the point where you're malnourished and gonna die. Like you're nowhere near that on a prep. Maybe you know like peak week if you do it the wrong way. If you yeah. do some Maybe people a little hyperglycemia a little. Yeah, I mean rate. honestly that was that happened one situation. But I mean honestly it's like if you're doing it the right way. You ne- no, you should never be anywhere near that area. So the point is like, yeah, I mean, I don't, he, so he, what he was saying was like essentially like don't complain about it. Like just enjoy, like just embrace it. Don't complain yeah. about it. You're not literally a, some, a starving person in another country. You're getting six meals a day. And I loved hearing him say that because I'm like, fuck, like this is literally a Mr. Olympia last year, second this year, done shit tons of shows. And like he just has that mentality. It really motivated me too to have that mentality, honestly. You know, for sure. I mean, because like you said, like you're voluntarily – doing this mm-hmm. and you know obviously unfortunate this is that but like you said you're not in a malnourished state where like death is a probability no. and you you literally sign up for it. you know this is what it's going to be it just sounds annoying you're going to bitch qua and whine cry this mm-hmm. is that like you should literally enjoy the fact that you're doing that and like well it's going to be inevitable you're going to have like you're suffering like there oh, is certain sure. levels yeah. of suffering fall in love but at the same suffering. time yeah you have to like literally you have to learn how to fucking yeah it's like sick you have to learn how to enjoy the suffering i mean like you know the best athletes in the world like it's like wrestlers whether it's wrestling or football or whatever like everybody you know it is suffering you know what i mean so if you want to be the best and you want to like do well you just have to suffer you have to embrace the suffer and just keep fucking doing it some shit yeah yeah, when are you gonna fucking? What, what when are you gonna I? ever compete? See, I've I've thought about that. Um, Some snapback I'll, I'll, action. I'll, even aside from the snapback, I mean, I would love to have just like a parallel reality where I could temporarily enter and just full blown just do everything it takes, compete all the way, do everything it takes, <laughs> do everything it takes, Jeez. and just you know really compete and just like see you know what I look like, what happens, enjoy the process, the discipline, the suffering, and all that, but. I've, I've done the calculations and I don't think that that's something that I want to do at least. Like you're saying you would, cause you're saying if you'd want to, like, if you were to compete, you know, the route you have to take down, mm-hmm. like you'd have to go down and mm-hmm. said, you don't, you wouldn't want to take like the performance enhancing shit like that. You wouldn't want to have to get, do all that shit. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that like, well, to be honest, I mean, like if you're going to compete, like, I mean, obviously like there's the natural federations, which a lot of people like, I mean, no hate towards the natural federations. I mean, a lot of um, really great, like there's a lot of really great natural competitors and stuff, but like, I know for me, like I, the best of the best physiques in the world are in untested federations. It's the MPC, the IFBB. So how I felt was like, if I'm going to compete, I want to do, I want to be where the best of the best are. Mm-hmm. So like, I mean, and I think that's your mentality too. Yeah. And, yeah. and just also like, I've, I've, I've heard some people say this in the past. It's intuitively made sense. I don't know how much like actual validity or grounded holds, but it's a known thing or trend to be said that it's honestly, it's healthier to compete on stuff mm-hmm. rather than off. Because, well, that's definitely debatable. That's but because like, <laughs> you could literally like you could sh- competing naturally. You could like shut your natural test down. It could take like six months to recover and all the other hormones yeah. that are mis imbalanced, like wick whack. Like. Yeah. But then again, you, what you could also do is like, let's just say, you know, you take testosterone and you shut yourself down from that. And then if you don't want to stay on it for the rest of your life or whatever, then you're also going to be shut down for six months after mm-hmm. the show anyway. So in reality, I mean, but then again, you're also going to, like you said, you're going to be shut down either way. Honestly, I mean, if you're taking, a very modest amount of stuff and you're like doing your blood work and stuff um it probably is better to, to maybe could be could but be better what, for your body what i think it boils down to like i think the main core reason that i'd really want to do that aside from just like seeing what i would look like is just like we talked about earlier having the concrete deadline goal in the future and that just giving you so much discipline and like just intrinsic fulfillment second to second moment to moment and what i'm trying to do is realizing okay if that's what i really want out of the process i could still have those less levels of discipline in other areas of my life it's just more difficult and tricky to instill because there's no set requirements if i don't you know do something one day that i you know would tell mm-hmm. myself I need to do. There's no immediate consequences in any way, shape, or form. But if you have a goal in the future, yeah. something you're going to hit, you know those consequences hold a lot of weight and it's very painful and you're going to do you know everything to like avoid them. Yeah. So I, I honestly, I think that's what it kind of... That would be, the, but it would be, be but point. it would be sick to see yeah. what you, what, what I could look like. Yeah. I mean, like, to be honest, I just feel like with competing too, and like th- this is, well, this is how I feel about it is that like, 
if you're going to decide to do it right, like for me right now that I've decided, like my goal is to be on the Olympia stage, Mm -hmm. like a hundred percent. That's my goal. And like, I'm getting into lifting. I've been passionate about it for seven years now. And like, I'm just, you, you know how I'm like a very competitive person and Hmm. stuff. So like it it gives me that Avenue again to, to be able to compete and like try to literally get to a world-class level, compete on the highest level. So, but like when you do commit to like, okay, that's what you want to do. Then like, it's a very like it is a very serious road to go down because you know what I mean like of what you're putting your body through one with the performance enhancing things and on top of that just prepping in general is not super healthy and uh, I mean there's a lot of stuff that goes into it it's just like a very um, yeah I mean you can do them all in healthier ways etc but it's a very serious thing you're putting all your time into it you're off season you're on season you're always like very you have to be perfect with everything you know what I mean so it's like what 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 percentage of people do you think for example, do a show just because, hey, like, I don't mm-hmm. really know that much about training. A lot. And nutrition, I have a decent a physique. Lot. Let me just take some gear and just kind of like do a show and just like see what happens. I think a lot of people do that, honestly. And like my, like, I don't know, like I almost, if like I would not recommend somebody like do a show and get into elite, like incredibly, incredibly elite type shape, like if their goal is not like to be very competitive, you know what I mean? Because it's like, you could like your number one, like if you're doing it for girls or you're doing it for you, your personal preference of how you want to look, most individuals don't want to get, they don't want to look like how people look on the day of the show. They want to look like how people look three weeks out. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also I feel like on the contrary, what could also happen is if they're just kind of recreation doing it just for shits and giggles, they could literally see how they look like, you know, especially if they had like in say an average physique beforehand and they literally transform to just elite caliber. They're like, holy shit. Wow. B tapers with the roof veins everywhere, mm. like eight pack abs. Like this is awesome. And then after their show, once they lose all that, I could see that for some people, if they're you know, solely banking on how they look yeah. externally to regulate their sense of self-esteem and self-worth, how they that can cause to compete. serious yeah. like problems and stuff. And, well, so and then, then they want to continue like to compete. Thing. And then it becomes like, Oh, I want to compete. Cause I, I like, you know, you have, there's always those people. I always want to be on prep. Like I'm prepping, like I'm prepping, like I'm mm-hmm. going to be prepping the next week. Like, and like, and you know, they're like, they're, they either have to have it in their mind. That they're going to be prepping soon, even if it doesn't happen or they are prepping. And it's always like that thing. And, I mean, yeah, unfortunately I do see that happening a lot. Honestly, I feel like I think I think with I think there's a lot of competitors that like that do go and like they compete like and they don't really un- I don't think maybe understand everything that like kind of goes behind it and then it ends up like really kind of messing with their mental state or whatever the case is because I mean, when you get that lean, right? And you've never been that lean before. Now it can easily cause body dysmorphia for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Like I'm saying competing, I like, I, it sounds like I'm bashing it. Like I love it, but I just think that like, you have to understand what goes into it. You have to understand that you can't be that lean year round. You can't use the same types of cycles like that you're doing for that year yeah, round. You're flirting with all these things. Yeah. Territory. Like you have to understand the magnitude and the scope of the decision yep. where if you don't, you know, consider that cause you know, it's a, unpleasant uncomfortable why do you want to consider that why not just you know do this kind of have fun like live Mm -hmm. in the moment but it is like a really really you know like it's it's a serious decision like it's not like and i think a lot of people just like they they use the fact that like that they're competing um to like kind of take stuff and it's like also which is Mm -hmm. fine i mean to each their own but at the same time it's kind of just like i think that like real serious competitors they use stuff so that they can be more competitive because mm-hmm. that's just what it takes. And, and, and it's truly not because they just want to look great on the beach or whatever the case is. And so, you know what I mean? Like it's, I so mean, it's kind of like, and so also, I mean, a lot of these people, right. They're ending up using stuff year round, using too much stuff, like doing all this stuff just to like try to chase, like, you know, that look how they are on prep all the time. They want to look like that. They want to whatever, but you know, they might not be the most genetically gifted or whatever. And they're taking all this stuff. And a lot of the best guys aren't on half the stuff or they're, you know, they're taking proper breaks. Like mm. I know plenty of people like that. And so it's just like, I mean, I don't know. You see a lot of it, but, um, so I don't know if you're going to compete anyone out there listening, then just, I would say, so make sure you know what you're getting into. Make sure that like you understand you're going to have to walk around at a higher body fat after the prep. And that's totally normal. And, um, yeah, I mean, that's just because I think that's a big part of it really is the body dysmorphia that it causes for a lot of fucking people, you know, for sure. Girls specifically. Yeah. And lo- like you were saying after how the people that, you know, compete and do it correctly, it's, they're not 
competing as a rationalization as a subconscious rationalization to take gear mm -hmm. they they're competing right and gear just just so happens you understand to be a necessary to tool yeah. to really push you to the next level because yeah. everything that you're doing is already maximally sufficient you've got your discipline down you've got your understanding of training yeah. nutrition all of that's down you just need that extra little cherry on top where a lot of other people don't have any of those fundamentals down whatsoever they just know oh show kind of compete yeah do it and then they you know, use the massive crutch and that leads to And all also the what you happens said. too is, you know, let's just say you're training for a year, right? And you have no business touching any type of performance enhancing oh, yeah. drug. And now you've touched one and you've gotten two years worth of results immediately. So now you're like, you feel like you can't do anything without them because you haven't developed a true love and passion for training and you haven't gone through months where, you know, you might have had an injury, then you're coming back. So you have felt like yeah, shit you, for you, months. You, you, you like you don't dues. understand it. Yeah. You haven't paid your dues yet. That's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. And like that can just be a recipe for anyone can lift for a few months like uh, like when you just start lifting you know the new begins infatuation that's amazing you fork everyone yeah. loves that shit. it's like that for everyone then when that dies off that's where you have to you know pay your dues or whatever mm -hmm. because you're gonna lose motivation now the friend's not gonna live so it's yeah. like in that if you could push through that that shows that you know this is something that you're capable of doing and exactly then, and it's like well there's no reason to take stuff like in my opinion I don't understand why you would ever take any performance enhancing drug if you're not trying to literally be to compete at the professional level, like literally basically being one of the best in the world. If you're not trying to do that and you're not making some sort of money out of it, whether you're w because you're winning shows, which is not much money in that, or because whatever the case might be, if it's not for any type of career reason, like, or, you know, trying to compete at the highest level professionally, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. I mean, like for me personally, I would never want to touch anything if I was not trying to go to the Olympia because of the fact that like you now have to literally I'm literally 21 years old and like you have to go get blood work done which otherwise I wouldn't even have to think about doing you know what I mean mm -hmm. like there's just I mean it's a serious thing that you're doing so yeah. essentially like it's I mean yeah thank you everyone for watching leave down in the comments below um, if you guys enjoy this you know who you potentially want to see on next and yeah See you in the next podcast. Thank you, Dylan, brother. It was a pleasure to have you on. Big man. Peace out.